Welcome everyone. Good morning. It's Wednesday morning, the 17th of February, 2021. My name is Pastor Clint Lang with Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House. Glad you could join me for today's Food for Thought devotions. If you've been following along with our recent devotional uh, series, we've started into talking about the parables of Jesus. And Lord willing, over the next coming weeks, we'll delve into all of the parables of Christ. And uh, it's going to be an exciting uh, study uh, adventure for us. And I pray that your hearts would be encouraged and strengthened as we go through these parables. Now today we come to a parable in the book of Mark called the parable of the seed growing secretly. And uh, in Mark chapter 4, 26 to 29, Jesus tells the story of the seed growing secretly. And he tells this story of how the kingdom of God is established and how it, how it grows. Now, as a backdrop to this particular parable, I think we need to keep in mind the parable of the sower, which we covered off on Friday, last Friday. And the parable of the sower talks about how the, the word of God is uh, the seed and how the word of God gets planted into the hearts of people and some people have hard hearts and it just bounces off and, and gets picked off by the de devil and his uh, minions and uh, the word is stolen away from their hearts. Some mm. falls on rocky soil which means there's areas of holdout and the person isn't willing to let God into every area of their life. They've got hardened places in their heart and how that soil is shallow and the person falls away as soon as the heat gets turned on in their lives and they walk away from Christ. And then there's uh, people who have weeds, uh, cares of this world, just, you know, different things that uh, cause them to divert their attention away from the truth of God's word and it actually chokes them out. So they, these, these kinds of soil never produce a harvest. Now, the kind of soil that does produce a harvest is good soil that's been, uh, we talked last week, I guess, about how uh, God preps the soil and how it's weed-free. Um, it's been, uh, been treated and uh, it's been tilled and the rocks have been raked out and it produces a harvest. Well, today we're talking about how the seed uh, grows. Interestingly enough, in Mark, uh, Jesus is talking to his disciples and he wants to share with them their connection, actually, with, uh, with the kingdom of God and the building of the kingdom of God. So he says this, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and it grows, though he does not know how. All by itself the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. So we, we uh, looked at this parable when he was talking to the disciples about this uh, particular parable. He's showing that there is a partnership um, between God and man in building the kingdom. Now, God doesn't have to do it this way, but he's chosen to do it this way. Each of us who have given our hearts to Jesus Christ and have become servants of the Most High God, we are just that, we're servants. Each of us is given a, t a task and a responsibility and our responsibility is that of a farmer under the chief farmer, <laughs> I guess you might call, call this. Um, we have a plot of land uh, that we're responsible to, to plant seeds in. So what is this plot of land? Well, the plot of land is the people that God places in our life through our, through our life. And uh, they represent the field. Their hearts represent the field. Now... When we come to the field, when we come to the people in our lives that, uh, that God's placed there, our responsibility as a farmer is to plant seed in the land. So we plant seeds, we sow seeds into the soil of the hearts of the people that are around us. Now it could be that uh, we're speaking with non-Christians and people that don't know Christ and we plant the seed of the gospel in them and that goes into them uh, into their hearts. And it could be that we have another Christian person that's already a believer, and there's truth that God wants us to share with them. Well, maybe it's a word of encouragement. Maybe it's some teaching. 
Maybe it's something, uh, something more. Uh, there's different times in, li- in our lives where God puts us in um, contact with other believers. And again, we're called to plant the seed of his word wherever we go. So we plant the word of truth into people's lives. Uh, it could be that we're called to be a teacher of a Sunday school class. It could be that we lead a Bible study. Maybe we're sitting around the coffee table at work and we have a chance to share with another believer. All these times are times where the wheat word of God can be sown. As parents, you're constantly sowing the word of God into your children, or I pray that you are, and um, giving them the truths of God's word through the Bible. So the Bible is God's word, and we are called by the chief farmer to plant seed into the fields. So what? that's what we do. Now, how does the growth happen? Well, you see, the responsibility of planting is uh, with us. So we're to share the word of God, and then God takes over. See, there is a time where we can't control what happens. Uh, we plant the seed, and we have to let it be. And uh, in those times, we pray for the people that uh, the seed has been planted in, and we pray that God would cause the seed to germinate. And you see, God is the master farmer, and, and uh, well, yeah, he may call us to go back out into the field and to water the seed that has been has been planted. He, he could do that where we're manually watering it. But there again, um, maybe God decides to cause the rain to fall or maybe he sends snow uh, before uh, it melts and the seed in the ground um, at just the right time receives water and God causes the sun to shine on the seed and warms the ground. And there comes a, pla- a place that the farmer the underling farmer, that's that's us. We don't really understand how it happens, but all of a sudden, the seed germinates. You see, the miracle is in the seed. The seed contains life. It uh, There's a miraculous work that happens with the seed. And when the Spirit of God has just the right timing, um, the, 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 the word that we've planted in people's hearts will germinate. That's what this is talking about. And this is how the kingdom of God is built. So we work in partnership with the spirit of the living God. What a beautiful um, picture of cooperation. And God, God desires his children to experience the joy of growth. Well, have you ever planted a garden and you, you kind of put the seeds in there and you don't know what's going to happen? Or, well, I, I mean, you have an idea of what's going to happen, but you, you're kind of anticipating it now. If you're impatient, you might go out to the garden the next day and there's nothing there and then there's nothing there the next day and well, you you know, the water, it maybe it rains one night and and the sun comes up and all of a sudden you look and there is a little green plant poking its head through the soil. Well, that's pretty awesome as a as a farmer, if you're a farmer and you look at that, that is an awesome feeling to see that the seed that you planted has germinated and has sprung to life. Wow, what a gift that is. But the power of the germination and the life that comes from it is not in the hands of the one who planted it. That's the, that's the responsibility of God and the miraculous process that that person's heart goes through to germinate the truth of God's word. So as the seed sprouts we see it grow and we can rejoice in that and um, maybe we're called to continue to water that plant and we see it develop and we see uh, maybe it start to look like it's going to bear fruit and then all of a sudden we see that fruit come to maturity and uh, it's ripe and it's ready for harvest now this can be at the end of a person's life when they accept christ and they they're harvested and brought into the barn of God. We can look at it that way. We can also look at it as, uh, you know, God causes a harvest of righteousness to be born into the people's hearts where the word is sown. So you yourself have grown in the Lord and uh, there comes a time where what God has put into you 
uh, comes to maturity and bears fruit, and there's a harvest of righteousness. Beautiful parable. This is how the kingdom of God grows. This is real food for thought. And uh, I'm grateful for the parables of Christ because they teach us so much. And I pray that you are encouraged today and that you would not be discouraged when you plant the word out there in people's hearts and you don't see results. Trust the Lord, the Lord of the harvest. You be faithful in what he's given you to do and he will be faithful to bring about the harvest in due course. This is Food for Thought.